Hello and welcome to episode three of On The Ball with me, Chris Nightingale. And me, Jabe Ship. So it's been a while since our last show and a lot has happened since then. Yes, that's right. We've had cup wins, promotions, league wins, unbeaten seasons and now Solent's cricket season has begun. So for our first feature, I took a little trip up to Chandler's Ford. So today I ventured outside the studio and come to the UK's first race simulation centre. Inside they provide a fascinating insight on what it's like to drive at over 200 miles an hour on over 400 different circuits. So I'm going to go inside now and book my place on the grid. So I'm now going to race Adrian. Um, I don't know what I've let myself in for but he looks pretty good. Okay, I can see Adrian, but he's getting further and further away. There's a corner coming, which means I'm going to crash. Yep, he's braking, I'm not. And I've got through. I've overtaken him, done him. This race is mine. This race is mine, and I've crashed. Oh. Okay, well the race centre here has been open for about five years now and it came out of the passion of myself and my brother both liking to race and particularly race each other. I was doing track days in my Lotus Elise, he was doing track days with his Ducati but that, that didn't allow us to race each other. We played on the PlayStation with a little split screen but that, that wasn't really what we were looking for. Uh, so between us we ended up building uh, three of these simulators just so we could race each other. Within about six months word had got round that these things exist in the barn in Winchester. Um, I ended up handing him a notice um, and it's grown into the race centre that you see today. We do have a number of professional race drivers up to the level of GP2 uh, who come down and use the equipment for driver training in the same way that the Formula One teams are using it for their driver training. Obviously if we all had the, the time and money spending a day real cars on track at Goodwood would be a great thing. Um, but you're very quickly looking at three, four hundred pounds minimum. You can come down here for 20, 30 pounds a head, uh, a group of you for a stag party, birthday party, and on a sensible budget, enjoy a racing experience. Everybody with the same equipment, no insurance issues, uh, nice and green, good for the environment. Um, go away with a smile on your face. Well, it's been a fantastic day's racing here at the Race Centre. If you want to know more about the driving venue, go to www.racecentre.co.uk. And that's all from me here, so back to you in the studio, Shippy. Great stuff. To basketball now, and after winning their league in the Cup, Solent's women's team had the chance to round off the perfect season with a promotion. So how did it go for Coach Liam Dell's team? After their Cup success in Sheffield just a few weeks ago, Solent women's basketball team were back in action. They welcomed Brunel University to St Mary's Leisure Centre for the first leg of the games that will see if Solent get promoted for the 2012-13 season. Despite not having played for several weeks, coach Liam Dell was confident of a victory and before the game the team morale was high. The morale's good, the effort is a little bit less than it should be but then we can't really expect a lot out of them after spending a month off of training, not playing games. And it's sort of one of them things we finished on such a high, it's like, to carry on, it's a bit of a, like, bit annoying, you could say. Brunel were always going to be tough opponents, but Coach Dell was fully aware. I know, I've seen a few clips and stuff, and I've been looking at, like, their Facebook groups and stuff they've got. And um, they've got a few good players, but they asked to postpone the game yesterday, because they don't have enough players. So, from what we've heard, they could be showing up with five players today, we don't know. But, I mean, at the end of the day, in my opinion, we're top of our league, they're top of theirs, it's who wants it the most. It's not about skills, it's who wants to, who wants to get the, there in front for the next game. As Brunel arrived, Coach Dale looked ahead to the possible promotion. Oh, we um, oh, just playing in Prem. I mean, today, today is not the promotion, it's the first leg. The next leg will be at, at Brunel at, some, like, at the back end of May. And then that decides who goes up. But it's like today, if we say like we won by 20, as long as we don't lose by 21, then we'd go up. 
So today's the first leg, and then the second leg's at Brunel. But I mean, if it goes well, like everyone will be happy because obviously we've got Sports Awards tonight to celebrate as well. So, fingers crossed though. The game started well for Solon and Bazia Dudek's quick thinking built on the home side's advantage. Solent continued to widen the gap as Brunel struggled to reply to the host's quality play. Early on, it was 15-6 to the home side. After half-time, it was much of the same for Solent and Dudek continued to impress. At 56 points to 33, it was all but over. However, Brunel didn't back down and showed why they have the quality to beat in this playoff. But 69-48 was the final score and Solent had the advantage going into the second leg of the Southern Premier Playoff. The match is scheduled to take place on the 2nd of May at Brunel University. Southampton Solent 69, Brunel University 48. So that convincing victory for the basketball team put them in a good position for the second leg away at Brunel. I can tell you that unfortunately they lost the second leg 54 points to 62, but because of the first leg victory advantage, they still managed to gain promotion. Next up is the men's basketball from when they played the Eastside Eagles in March. Here's the best of the action from the match where they won 71 points to 57. <laughs> Massive congratulations there for the team. So now we're off to our new sports centre with Chris to show all the final tables of Solent's teams who've competed in the Bucks League over the past academic year. Chris? Thanks James. So firstly, the women's basketball team finished in first place after a first leg playoff victory against Brunel and have now been promoted on goal difference. For the men's basketball, Solent finished in third position in the Western 1A League with 18 points just behind Bath and Cardiff. And in the women's football, Solent finished in fourth place with 16 points in the Western 2A League. And finally, in the men's football, Solent finished in third position with 16 points behind Bath and close rivals Southampton University. If you want to know more about the final league tables and results, go to www.bucks.org.uk. So now it's that part of the show where we introduce our special guest. And this week, it's Solent first team footballer, Chris Box. Chris, lovely to have you on the show. Cheers for having me, boys. So Chris, it's a pleasure to have you here. But um, it's been a frustrating season for you, to say the least. You've had two major injuries, haven't you? Yeah, correct. As you said, um, two major injuries. I had the fractured collarbone at the start of the season, which uh, obviously ruled me out through uh, most of the Saturday league at the start of the season. And obviously, done uh, the ligaments in my knee again, so I missed uh, most of the uh, university um, season Wednesdays and Saturdays, so a uh, bitter, bitter blow. You say again, obviously you did it before um, when you were much younger, when you were 
at Fulham. Yeah. Um, how much of a blow was that the first time, and then to have it the second? Um, time? The first time it was, uh, um, it killed me basically. Obviously, that stopped me from getting a professional contract at the age of 16. So obviously, that meant a lot to me. And um, yeah, again, and then obviously, you say the second time round, it's a, uh, it's a bit frustrating how you know, and it's the injury stories are uh, aggravated itself and come back around. So it's uh, pretty unlucky, I think. And you see, like players like Chris Smalling and Stephen Corker, you yeah. used to be your teammates. Do you are you jealous of them, or are you just happy um, for what they've done? Yes, a bit bitter at this. At bit, uh, yeah, sorry, a bit bitter, uh, <laughs> especially towards Stephen. Towards you know, we both played at Fulham together, and obviously at England at, as well together. So I was a bit bitter. But obviously, I'm um, you know happy for him. You know, making his name in, in the game really, and obviously you know always be supportive of him and you know Chris as well. Looking towards your own career at the moment, obviously still playing for Solon. A more positive outlook. Next season, you hopeful coming back and playing again in the third year? Yes, yeah, hopefully. Um, you know, got to have a word with the, uh, the gaffer at the uh, start of the season, so, uh, keep him in touch with uh, my fitness and progress, and then we'll take it from there. So, yeah, around about August, really. So, yeah. Cool. So, um, obviously, just going back to your Solent season this year, hmm. you've played two games, but did you feel fit enough? Um, did you feel you were taking a bit of a risk by playing? I think definitely the first game I played, um, I had a uh, strap on my shoulder so to you know prevent you know anything from trying to you know fall out or you know loosen up, uh, loosen out. Sorry. Um, so obviously I felt about you know not 100% fit, and then the second game obviously playing that game it made me a bit more fit. But yeah, again I was always uh, <coughs> cautious about my uh, shoulder in case you know I went up for a header or you know I hurt myself. So. You know, had to uh, call it call it a uh, day after that one, really. Is that something that always, do you think, will play in mind in the future as well? Because when um, you come back from an injury, you're a bit uh, apprehensive about going for certain tackles. Yes. And does it play on your mind quite a lot? Yeah, it does. Um, obviously, you know, as a defender, you know, your main job is to, you know, jump up and, you know, get rid of the ball in the air, you know, in the air and, you know, you know, loads, make loads of tackles are physical with the strikers. So um, I will have to, you know, mend it up and make sure that you know I'm physically strong again when I start playing football again. OK, well, thanks for that, Boxy. But now it's that time in the show where we put our presenter up against our guest in Head to Head. So the first question is, yeah, is to you, Boxy. So it's a Chelsea-related question you'd like to know. So what is the nationality of the Chelsea player who scored their opening goal in the semi-final first leg victory over Barcelona in April? In April, uh, Didier Joffre, I believe, I bore in his Ivory Coast. Yep, 1 0 boxy. Um, ship. Who scored Manchester City's winning goal last Sunday to give them a victory over QPR to give them their first title in 44 years? That will be Sergio Aguero. 1 1. Which football team finished their 2011 12 Premier League campaign on 52 points with Liverpool? Should know this one. Should be uh, my old team, Fulham. I yep. believe. Two on Boxy, um, mm. Shippy, uh, yeah. to equalise. Uh, which two teams were relegated from uh, Football League Two this season? Oh, Hereford. Yeah. And um, Macclesfield. Yeah. It's two also. We we'll go for a little tiebreaker. Um, so it's the first. Just to say the answer. So, how many um, how many points did Real Madrid finish on in this season's La Liga? Oh. Um, Eighty six. 96. <laughs> well, the answer is 100, so Shippy or Cody, you get the win. <laughs> oh dear, yes. oh dear. Oh dear. Game feet. three, two again. <laughs> Good game, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> As you've hung on this long, we've got a special treat for you and Chris. Here's a fine example of the professionalism Chris shows while he's on the job. Enjoy. So today I ventured outside the studio and come to the UK's first race simulation centre. Here they provide a fascinating insight on what it's like to drive over 200 miles an hour on over 400 different tracks. So I'm going to go inside and book my place on the grid. Shall I do that once more? Well it's been a fantastic day here at the race centre. If you want to know more about the centre go to www.driverschallenge.com well, it's been a fantastic day here at the race centre. If you want to know more about racing here, go to www.driverschallenge.co.uk. <laughs> if you want to know more about racing at the venue, go to www.drivers. If you want to know more about racing at the venue, go to www.drivers. 
fantastic day here at the race centre. If you want to know more, go go. Ahead. So I ventured outside the studio today and come to the UK's first racing simulator. If you want to know more about the venue, go to www.theracecentre.co.uk. Action! <laughs> I'm just going to walk out. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you want to know more about coming here, go to www.co.uk. If you want to know more about coming to the venue, go to www.co.uk.